All right, welcome to today's uh, user group meeting in Azure User Group Norway. Uh, the topic for today is uh, introduction to open service mesh. Uh, my name is Jan Eglering. I'm one of the hol holsters behind the Azure User Group Norway, uh, together with uh, Martin Anders, who's also in the talk today. Um, our speaker for the day is uh, Robert Strand. He's uh, working as a cloud architect at uh, Crayon. Is working primarily with the Azure Automation and Infrastructure, currently focusing on containers, cloud native technology, and everything as code. He's a founder of the Norwegian Postal User Group, a Microsoft certified trainer, and an open source advocate. So I think he's a good fit for today's topic, which is open service mesh. Um, just one word from our sponsor before we get started. Uh, our user group partners with Microsoft Norway, and we have, as uh, before, a cool Microsoft branded backpack to share with today's winner of the best tech qu question competition. So on, excuse me, on this slide, you'll find a link to the guide on using the OSM add-on for Azure Kubernetes service and a link to claim your digital badge of the Azure Heroes program. Also, Microsoft Norway has a tech Twitter account where they announce their own and community-driven events for developers. So please follow at msdevno to stay updated. I'll make sure to post both of these links in the chat when we get started. So that's it uh, from me. Uh, take it away, Robert. All right. Let's see if I can actually manage to share my screen. All right, uh, I think you'll see my screen now, right? Yes, yes, we do. All right. Uh, yes, thank you, uh, Jan Egel. Uh, uh, you more or less said everything that I'm gonna say in the next few slides, but let's, <laughs> let's just quickly go over it. Uh, welcome, uh, we're gonna take an introduction uh, class, if, if you like, to open source mesh. Um, let's see, there you go. As previously mentioned, my name is Robert, I'm a cloud architect, and I do all of these things. I have trouble getting all my information into one slide. So this is the current version. Next time you'll see me talking, it's probably gonna be different. Um, I happen to be a HashiCorp ambassador because of my work with Terraform and Vault. And I do a lot of things in the cloud native space. I'm part of several uh, uh, cloud native computing foundation working groups. Uh, try to you know be as central to the process there as, as possible, as much as I can at least. With, little free time I have. And one of the things that come out of the CNCF is the open service mesh, which is an initiative from actually from Microsoft side. So it's kind of, it's, uh, it's very exciting to see Microsoft being so, so in that space, you know, with uh, AKS being a, what it is and everything like that. Um, but key takeaways that I want you to have is uh, about open service mesh is like, what is it? Uh, and why and when to go for open source mesh and how to get started with it. So if you've seen people talk about open source mesh before, you probably know the the, the bookstore demo that they show. They, they have created an entire demo for everything that I'm gonna show, that everything that you can do with open source mesh, right? Uh, so <clears throat> I'm gonna use that demo because you know why reinvent the wheel. Uh, but first of all, let's talk about service mesh. Um, which is a, a, a whole topic in itself, but I'll try to briefly go over it so we, so we all are aware of what it is. Uh, I, I tried Googling what is service mesh and I found a lot of answers. So for instance, uh, Buoyant, who is the company behind Linkerd, which is the original service mesh, uh, says that a service mesh is a tool for adding observability, security, and reliability features to applications by inserting these features at the platform layer rather than the application layer. Uh, I thought that was a, a semi-good expl explanation, So, uh, but I, I wanted to see if anyone had any better. So I found that the Nginx uh, site, which also there's an Nginx uh, service mesh, uh, they say a service mesh is a configurable low latency infrastructure layer designed to handle a high volume of network-based inter-process communication among application infrastructure services using application programming interfaces, APIs, which I thought was extremely <laughs> boringly written. Sorry if anyone here uh, was behind that line, but um, so, so I was kind of you know scrolling through all the results and, and I found this from solo.io who also does create a service mesh and other tools and great uh, open source uh, uh, people. 
they said a service mesh is an infrastructure layer that abstracts application networking from the business logic of your application service. A service mesh can provide a configurable network layer for communication between services using their APIs. Communication between the application service are facilitated through the sidecar proxies forming the data plane, and that communication is managed through the service mesh's control plane which in two uh, sentences or a couple of sentences, it's just basically it says everything you need to know about service mesh. So a service mesh is an abstraction of, uh, of the networking in your application stack. So when you're doing microservices and, and things like that, um, if you want mutual TLS between your your uh, services, if you if you need to do A B testing, if you need to you know route your traffic one way or the other way, it can get really hard uh, just straight out of the gate with Kubernetes, and you have to do a lot of work uh, by using a service mesh. You kind of just get that more or less in your lap. Um, so <laughs> a very 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 high level design uh, with my extremely great drawing skills uh, look something like this. So we have a pod, which obviously contains a container or several containers, uh, which gets injected with a proxy sidecar. Uh, many use uh, uh, Envoy's uh, proxy uh, sidecar. Uh, also, Open Service Mesh does that. But for instance, like Linkerd, they created their own. Uh, which is uh, looks like it's kind of beating Envoy on more or less all performance things and, uh, and things like that. So you know, but it, it's a hard job to do. So you have Envoy with you know, Envoy, which you can just you know use if you like to just get uh, to create a service mesh if you if you want to do that. I don't know why you want. There's so many service meshes now, so keep stick with something that works. Um, these sidecars make it so that. You don't have to have communication between the, the pods themselves. This is controlled through the control plane, which can be a pod or a number of pods doing uh, all the hard lifting. So why open source mesh? Well, uh, like I said, open source mesh, it's a, it's, a, it's a thing that comes out of Microsoft, but it's not, it's not closed source. It's open source and works with every uh, CNCF uh, certified Kubernetes uh, distribution. It's, it's, it works on, uh, um, you know, with, with all the, the, the known way of working with, with Kubernetes, right? So the, the thought behind it is that it's supposed to be simple and uh, to understand and contribute to, which means the code base is a very, is, is, is very neatly written. Everything's kept uh, at its minimum. Uh, it's written in Go. If you know Go and want to contribute to something, feel free to contribute to Open Service Mesh. Uh, effortless to install, maintain, and operate. Uh, it's a Helm chart, or you can use the the CLI tools, which I think more or less just gets the, the Helm chart and does everything with that anyway. Um, and there's very few components. We're going to look at that very soon. So th there's not a whole lot of thing going on there when it comes to to operational overhead uh, painless to troubleshoot they're trying to you know uh, get uh, as much metrics and as much information to the surface as possible and it's easy to configure via service mesh into uh, service mesh interface which is a uh, it's a it's a spec that comes out of cncf so uh, when everyone started doing service meshes you know it was kind of a hard time you know understanding all of them uh, so they've created a, a standardized uh, uh, spec for how service meshes should work. Uh, I'll explain that in just a few. Uh, so, so this is more or less what happens uh, in open service mesh. You have your pod. Your pod have a, uh, all right, sorry. That should probably not pop up if, um, if you're um, on um, sharing. Sorry. Um, you have your pod here. I don't know if you see my mouse, but you have your pod here, which has your app container, your in container, and your uh, and your now Envoy proxy. So uh, trafficking will go through there. The, the Envoy will talk to the Envoy proxy will talk through mutual uh, TLS uh, uh, secured uh, uh, gRPC to the proxy control plane, which you know controls how the proxy talks to everything. Um, the, uh, this happens in the controller pod, 
which is more or less the only thing other than than uh, or more or less the only thing that's going to be deployed here. Um, that uses the mesh specifications from the SMI to talk to Kubernetes API, where all the things are as uh, as objects. So you, you can look at that, and, and uh, we'll we'll look at that when we'll deploy thing. It also has integration towards uh, cert uh, certificate managers. So internally, when you just set it up, it uses a, a, a Tresor. I'm not sure if that's how we pronounce it, but that's like the internal uh, CI, uh, CA tool. Um, but if you have HashiCorp Vault as a CA, or if you uh, you could use Cert Manager to point towards your CA to get the certifications, uh, and and you know, so we can use uh, certificates between uh, uh, for mutual TLS in, with the Envoy proxies. It, it has some endpoints providers, which deals with uh, outgoing and ingoing traffic and things like that. And it also uh, patch uh, the pods that you you know enable for for use with open source mesh. So this is it. Uh, it it uh, pr you have Prometheus and Grafana, which and, and Open Telemetry slash Jaeger, which also talks with Envoy, and that's the entire stack. Uh, so it's it's a fairly straightforward uh, thing. Uh, it uh, uh, it's very easy to set up. It's very easy to use. Um, yeah. And uh, so say so, all right. So sorry. Uh, the SMI spec. So the SMI spec is a a, a project that uh, a CNCF project where uh, a lot of people just came together and and you know talked about the the, the issues with having all these service meshes just popping out everywhere. So what they are have introduced are a set of APIs. They have uh, an API for traffic access control, for traffic splitting, uh, the traffic specs. So uh, you know how are where are what are the routes and everything like that, and also traffic metrics. What type of metrics do you want to get out and from where? So uh, tightly integrated with that. That's what we're going to see in the demo. Uh, installing service mesh. It's just simply using either the CLI tool or a standard Helm deployment, which works perfectly fine. All right. Any questions so far? I forgot to say that if you have any questions, feel free to yell out. I'm trying to monitor the uh, the chat and everything like that, but it's not not that easy to do. No questions, uh, at least for now. All right. See that. Pop one in just as we. Uh, service mesh are mostly viewed as a tool to be used with K8S. What if you want to use it with VMs or Docker containers not managed via uh, Kubernetes? So, uh, for instance, Open Service Mesh is a Kubernetes tool. Uh, <clears throat> if you if you need to have a service, there are service meshes that also works with uh, traditional IIS. Uh, for instance, uh, uh, console can be used for that from HashiCorp. So, so there are options there. Open service and mesh is not one of them, to be honest. All right. So, right now we have set up our demo. Uh, we have uh, our book buyer application and a book thief application, which both try to you know buy or steal from the bookstore application. Uh, and everything in behind there talks to the book warehouse, uh, not to get too much into details on that. I also set up, uh, uh, as you can see up here, some forwarding, uh, which we'll find here. And we have our book buyer, our book thief, our bookstore, and in a little while, we're gonna have a bookstore version two, which we're gonna you know, do some traffic splitting in. Uh, that's why we have the bookstore V2 here. So right now, as you can see, nothing is happening. Uh, both the book buyer and the book thief are trying to buy slash steal books from the bookstore, but can't get through. Uh, the reason for that is when you set up um, uh, set up open service mesh in itself, you get mutual TLS out of the gate. But uh, if you if by itself traffic is not open. So if I just Get out of this. I'll have a. Uh, if we look at at what we're going to run, are we going to run a cube CDL uh, call or whatever, however you want to pronounce it, patch on the mesh config 
uh, custom resource definition, which uh, OSM is looking towards, and where we have our OSM mesh config. Uh, and what we're going to do is we're going to patch in the, the traff uh, on the tra spec uh, and traffic uh, section. We're going to put in, as you can see over here, oh, it's too slow, uh, the enable permissive trafficking mode and set that to true. This means that every uh, traffic is just going to be wide open, right? There's, we're not going to look for for uh, any rules. We're just going to, you know, open the floodgates. So if we run that one, if you look over here, we can, now we're going to see that uh, all of a sudden we're buying books, and the book thief is stealing books, and the bookstore has now sold. Which it's not the correct way to say that as you know, it's 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 stolen and stole as old uh, thirty books counting. Uh, let's uh, I'll just run the patch back uh, and and update again to close the floodgates because you know it's fine for now, but we that's not how we want it, right? We want to control our traffic. And specifically, we want to control and make sure that the book buyer gets through and the book thief does not. And the way we do that is by doing two, two things. First of all, uh, I don't know if this is, uh, is this small text or should I scale it up? I can see it from here at least. <laughs> if, well, if, all right, there you go. I, I, I'll just have to sit further back. Um, <laughs> So here we here we go. We we we're we're talking against the API access API from the from the service mesh interface spec. Uh, we're creating a a, a, a access uh, as a rule called bookstore in the name space bookstore, and we're saying that from the destination that uses the service account bookstore, um, we want the HTTP route group called bookstore service routes, which have the matches of buy a book and bots, uh, bots book, kind of weird to say, the matches we're gonna see in the next uh, file. So don't worry, it makes sense then. Um, we're gonna say if it comes from, from, from that service account, if it matches this route group and, the, and if, the, the, if the source from where the traffic is coming is the service account book buyer, and we have commented out the book thief. So we're only allowing book buyer in, not the book thief. Uh, well, that, that looks great. So we are doing k apply f04 traffic. Uh, actually, that was wrong, but all right. Uh, let's, let's look at that then before I do anything else and open floodgates. So what, I, what I did, the next one I was going to do is the HTTP route group itself. So we're creating the group, we're creating the matches, one called buy, uh, bots book and the other called buy a book, and they have different uh, values here. So uh, what endpoints is coming in at, what methods is using, what uh, headers are in play, et cetera, et cetera. And then I have to do a K apply F on the third one. So now we have allowed book buyer to go through and it starts starting to buy some books and book thief is not allowed. Uh, obviously we then could uh, allow the book thief if we wanted to uh, by just you know updating it and say that uh, sources are both uh, the service account book buyer and the service account book thief. So let's just do that, just make sure that everything is actually working as, as intended. So the book thief should be starting to stole, stealing, to stole some books, stealing some books. Um, and you know, that's cool. Um, but let's say that we have a, a version two of our application, so we have we have our version one here. It works, uh, and let's pretend that we have some reason to update that and create a new version. The actual application is going to be exactly the same, but uh, um, you know, let's just pretend. And this is just creating a service, creating a service account, doing a deployment of the application as described from the OSM team. 
we'll do a k apply zero. No, let's not do one one. And for us to see anything from that uh, endpoint, we're going to have to stop our port for the building scripts because we kind of need to. Uh, it didn't exist when we started it the first time. So now, here we go. Now we got bookstore v2 and bookstore v1. v1 is still, you know, the the, the place to go. Uh, but we kind of want to check out the function functionality of v2. So we kind of we want to allow. Uh, for now, let's just allow 50% of the traffic to come in to V2. And the way we do that is we create our uh, traffic split. So if we look at the 50-50 there. Uh, and again, this uses the uh, service mesh interface uh, spec. Uh, now it's taking this, uh, the split API, which has the kind traffic split. Um, naming and namespace as per usual. Uh, and now we're uh, selecting the service uh, that we're going to update. And we can then now uh, define the backends in play. And as far as I know, I think you can just, you know, put on as many backends as you want. Probably should end up at 100% or something, which makes sense. So let's apply this and we'll see that 50% of the traffic uh, will now go through uh, bookstore one and 50% uh, on the uh, the other one, bookstore two. And then we see we get some, it's a slow down. And now the half of the traffic is going through there. And as you can see here, now we're, we got some, some books from bookstore V2 and we're, well, we've been, we've been buying from bookstore V1 for a while, so. We have plenty of that. Now, as you can see here, we don't have, uh, there's no stealing from bookstore, um, from bookstore V2. And the reason why that is, is because we, we haven't allowed the traffic to bookstore V2 um, from the, um, from the um, uh, yeah, from book thief. Let's see, it was a question that popped up. Uh, not the most experience with uh, Kubernetes, but your URLs are localhost. That does does that mean that deployments are local, not on Azure AKS? Uh, yes. Well, uh, yes and no. For right now, I'm running this on Kind, which is Kubernetes in Docker. Uh, so that just means that I can I can spin up a Kubernetes cluster straight through Docker Desktop. Uh, and that's a great way to do do uh, you know trial and error testing out stuff development things uh, towards Kubernetes, but uh, you're seeing localhost uh, because I'm doing a port forwarding. If I had this running in Azure uh, Kubernetes service or any other Kubernetes uh, deployment, uh, it will still say localhost because port forwarding actually maps a port. Uh, locally on your machine and that will then point towards the service that you're port forwarding to if that makes sense so even if this was aks actually it would still would still say local host um, right where are we i also have a file called traffic split i'm not sure yeah so for instance if we want to go back and and, and just set everything to uh, to bookstore again, we could just weigh in 100% to one, right? Uh, or whatever split you want. Uh, if we look at our eighth file, right? So we can just uh, we, we can go all in on bookstore v2 because you know that worked that worked fine. And now we'll see that. Uh, that uh, for, first of all, uh, Book Thief is going to stop. He's not allowed access to Bookstore v2. <clears throat> but um, Book Buyer is going to continue to buy, and now is solely buying from Bookstore v2. So it seems like our traffic, you know, traffic uh, works in that sense. Other than that, uh, that's basically all the functionalities you have besides uh, metrics. Um, so let's see if we can get that working. That, that's been a little bit on and off. Uh, so if I do the OSM dashboard, hopefully that will open in, well, 
not up there. It makes no sense. Uh, let's just do it. All right. Yeah, I had a little bit issues with uh, <clears throat> with browser profiles and 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 opening and closing things. I'm sure if you uh, if you've done a lot of these uh, test trial and errors, then uh, you notice that, that that might be a problem. Let's see if I can find a, a, a useful way of doing that. Um, any questions while I tinker? <laughs> there is one question from Avin. Uh, he says, I see application service users buying books. Normally you have users buying books. <laughs> is there any support for user authorization in Envoy Proxy? If not, what is the common pattern to enforce this? And um, is it possible to have two sidecars? Uh, there's no, uh, that's kind of out of scope as I see it for open service mesh. So uh, the way you should look at open service mesh, and I probably should have said that at the start also, uh, open service mesh is not a production ready uh, system. If you go to their website, they're, they're, they're all about, you know, make sure that you don't use this in, in production yet. Um, but uh, what you're saying is uh, or asking for is sort of out of scope for what open service mesh is trying to to do uh, but uh, if you there there's uh, all the possibilities in the world to add another sidecar to this uh, if you're using something that that uh, you know that uh, any author authorization method that would add a sidecar that should work fine that shouldn't, uh, you know, conflict with the uh, with the networking for the application themselves. Uh, how you do that, I'm, you know, not completely sure. It's probably something that you want to route uh, uh, through uh, through a, a different type of service rather than having as a sidecar. When I think about it, all depends on how that actually adds up. All right, for some reason, uh, the OSM dashboard uh, really doesn't want to work. Um, which might be, all right, so live troubleshooting, it's great. Which might be, well, I don't know why, Grafana is there. So let's try and, let's try and pour forward with that. All right, that should now work. It actually says HTTPS, it's not HTTPS. Oh, there you go, okay. Maybe that's why. So uh, new installation, so admin, admin, and new password admin, because uh, it's, gonna, it's gonna live until the demo is done, right? So let me just find the right window so I can see all you people. Uh, well, uh, well, one more yeah. question uh, from Andreas. Uh, he says, now that you have OSM installed and you use it for traffic splitting between V1 and V2, how does it look like from the application side? Is it the same domain name for V1 and V2? So, uh, yes. Uh, if we look at... Uh, if we look at the service, so the service that we're uh, pointing this towards is uh the same uh or it could be the same rather to be to be honest uh let's see um yeah as per now we're, we're pointing you know we're we're splitting traffic between two different uh services if you did uh if you did um ingress through open service mesh you could add that uh into the equation here so you'll have one uh, one FQDN if you want, or one one IP address that everything would go through, and then you can do the splitting towards that. Didn't do that in this demo. Uh, again, this is just a a simple um, what you call it um, a proof of concept type demo. 
Uh, is it possible to, uh, for receiving workload to get identity of the calling workload for authorization purposes in code? Uh, everything that you're doing HTTP-wise uh, will still go through. Uh, and and so you know if you have if you have uh, if you if you have authorization through uh, through tokens and everything like that uh, that will go through. It doesn't strip anything off that process. It simply directs traffic uh, or allows it between uh, or as service to service. Yeah, um, it it that probably would be yes. Uh, um, I think so. I, I need to preface that I think so. Open source mesh is not something that's in production, and I haven't used it in production for this, <laughs> so that's why I, haven't, I can't really say for sure. But uh, but that does make sense to me. Uh, I would urge you to go to the open service mesh uh, website, and 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 if that is something that you need uh, for your uh, sake, to check it out. That everything works out as as intended. Um, yes. All right, so uh, there's a default Grafana that you have. Obviously, you can put this up against your your own um, um, Grafana uh, instance or Prometheus instance, and here we can see that just you know all the normal information that we need to know: how much memory are we using, how much CPU are you using. We also have, and this didn't work, the data plane. Uh, I'm not sure why this isn't working. I I, I saw that it wasn't working yesterday. Uh, there might be some extra setup uh, things here that uh, there, you know, aren't default. Uh, like I said, this is pre-production, so so uh, so everything here is subject to change at all at all points of time. Uh, so the only one that's been working, as I could tell, is just the normal details about uh, the mesh and the envoy proxies. And even then, some of these aren't, you know, really great. It's just this pops up when you're deploying, uh, and things like that, and the injector web hooks and stuff like this. Uh, so that's open service mesh in in a uh, really quickly. Um, and uh, obviously, like I said, this is a work in progress. Uh, if you are, uh, my recommendation, if you are looking into service mesh, um, and you need that. And, and uh, I, I won't say why you need it because uh, I, I think there's a lot of people in the community that now say, uh, when do we, when do you need a ser when, when do you need a service mesh? Well, you know when you need a service mesh. Uh, but if you need a service mesh, uh, open service mesh is going to be great. It's going to be uh, integrated directly into uh, into AKS. There's going to be an add-on for that. But for now, it's not production ready. I would highly suggest looking at Linkerd. Uh, that seems to be the uh, the uh, the the uh, the fastest and most efficient, and also uh, again very easy to uh, to uh, to work with. Uh, they have a GUI where you can do stuff, and it also supports the same SMI specs. And before uh, leaving, I'll just put in the link to the open source mesh uh, page for those who are interested. All right. I think that's more or less it. If someone doesn't have any other questions that I might not be able to answer. <laughs> uh, any time frame on when it's expected to be prod ready? Not that I've seen. Uh, I am in the I am in the Slack channel for Open Service Mesh, and uh, and I, I talk to some people that are working on it, but uh, I haven't seen anything uh, declared in, in in big time at, at least. So not sure when, but as Microsoft are already adding it to AKS, I'm, I'm guessing it's gonna be not that long. They they are they are very, they are working on it. But obviously, this is also Cloud Native Computing Foundation uh, project, which is now in the sandbox stages. And going through that process takes a while. Uh, it's it's not just you know now we're ready, let's go. Uh, you have to go through the diligent uh, due diligence uh, meetings with uh, with a you know a subject matter expert on these things, and you know before you get approved all the way. 
and that takes a while and there's probably going to be findings there so you know don't hold your breath but i'm hoping that they're going to solve some of these problems that i've had at least in tests uh, very soon and um, other than that it, it looks it does what it says on the tin it's very easy to install and it's very easy to direct traffic and work with that Uh, if I have installed Jaeger for distributing tracing, so uh, uh, Open Service Mesh has a just you know hook off to use Jaeger. Uh, I tried doing that, and something in the Helm deployment failed. So I haven't looked in that uh, directly. I, I don't run service meshes uh, in the Kubernetes clusters that I work with for now. For now, uh, so that's an uh, unexplored field for me. But um, um, I have not heard that Jaeger uh, uh, look and feel unfinished. Uh, but then again, to be honest, I haven't heard a lot about Jaeger in particular directly. You have the Open Telemetry uh, project, uh, which you know, uh, just like uh, uh, service mesh uh, interfaces, you know, something that try to get all these telemetry tools to do it, do it by a standard, right? And um, and that might be why maybe Jaeger kind of feel feels feels bad at the moment. But uh, but hopefully if uh, if um, op hopefully open telemetry will kind of fix that. This is why we need standards. Let's just put it like that. Something we haven't had in the, in the cloud native uh, space. All right. Are there any limitations with service mesh that will only work with Linux containers, not working with Windows containers? So, um, uh, yes, uh, at the moment, uh, it seems to be uh, a pattern that it works with uh, Linux containers and not Windows containers. But I know for a fact that the open service mesh people are looking into that. And there was some, uh, again, uh, I'm more in the app delivery uh, group of people and security things. So, but but from what I heard from uh, from network, the networking people, there, there has been some sort of breakthrough there. Uh, something that now works better with Windows, and then uh, as soon as the service meshes will, you know, adopt uh, that, then uh, then the Windows will be coming soon. Uh, Microsoft works hard to get Windows containers to <laughs> a better place. Um, it has uh, it, it hasn't been great so far, but uh, and even though Microsoft loves Linux and uh, and everything open source. They they still they still want to support Windows containers, right? Uh, so so they're working hard on getting that to uh, uh, to a better state than what is now. All right, you guys are good at asking questions. Every time I try to stop, uh, people are saying stuff. Yeah, that would be cool. Uh, looking forward to uh, to uh, to an even more integrated Microsoft into the. Uh, Cloud native space, and 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 they are they they are a part of every single working group, every single uh, 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 technical advisory group. They're they're everywhere within there, so they're they're trying their best. But you know, so it's, it's a big company. Okay. Now it seems like we are out of questions. So uh, I just want to thank you for for exploring open service mesh with me. Obviously, there's uh, there like I said, it's not production ready. So uh, Linkerd would be uh, you know a great uh, starting point to look at. You have things like Istio, which you know is famously complicated. Uh, so if you just want service mesh, uh, mutual TLS, some splitting. Uh, some integration towards ingress and, and egress, you know, maybe Linkerd is the way to go. Look at that. Uh, but open source mesh is definitely a contender uh, in this space. All right. All right. Thank you very much, Robert. Great presentation. Thank you.